If you've seen the two most popular videos on my channel, you know I'm a huge Starkid fan. But I have to admit, I haven't personally checked out much of the output from their sister company, the Tin Can Bros. Not because I dislike them at all, I just never got around to it. Their short films, their YouTube skits, and a good chunk of their musicals have all gone unseen by me for quite some time with only one major exception. That exception being yet another musical that I absolutely adore, Spies Are Forever. And hey, would you look at that, the company just turned 10. Might as well show them some love. This is a musical I could do a full breakdown of, maybe, but I'm not going to because I'm still burnt out from the Black Friday video, and a couple of really good video essays that do that from different angles already exist, and I'm going to link them in the description because you should totally go show them some love. But what I'm going to do today is focus on a theme that I noticed in the show. I'm going to break down how his presence is foreshadowed throughout, and how it all ties together into one last scene. Of course, this video is going to be filled with spoilers for Spicer Forever, including one of my favorite twists of all time, so if you haven't seen the play, I highly recommend watching it before you continue. Something that is brought up multiple times throughout the show, but is just as quickly brushed aside by our main character, Kurt Mega, if that is, your real name. is the development of a large-scale surveillance network being used to gather government secrets. It's first brought up by spy gadget developer Barb, a character that Kurt doesn't take very seriously. He isn't paying super close attention to what she's saying for most of the scene, but I think it's very telling that her bringing up this specific idea is one of the only things that seems to get a genuine reaction out of him. A reaction that he tries to hide and play off. Well, picture this. The world's first large-scale information collective and archival system. Totally cool, huh? Huh. He is noticeably more taken aback here than he is by any of the other stuff Barb says, the stuff he actually isn't paying attention to. But he's able to play it off in a way that makes you think Kurt isn't as tuned in as he actually is. Such technology would of course put Kurt's job as a government spy in jeopardy. His entire life's work is gathering government secrets after all. So this reaction of him being visibly off guard to the audience while managing to keep his calm and play it cool makes a pretty decent amount of sense. There is another huge reason he would be apprehensive to this, but I'm not bringing that up right now, just in case some of you ignored the spoiler warning, go watch Spies of Forever, guys. The show's main villains are later revealed to be in the possession of such technology, using it to further their own goals. One such way they're using it is through the blackmail and manipulation of Tatiana, Kurt's rival in the first act turned close friend in the second. With her past as a KGB assassin being held against her, her family's lives at risk if her whereabouts were to make it back to the country she fled from, she's forced into a position where she has to do the bidding of the Nazi syndicate that is holding her information hostage. The only way to help them was to abandon them. And von Nazi promised you a way to get them back. For a price. He has my entire history in his pocket. If that information fell into the wrong hands. Man, I would really hate to have my information held hostage by a Nazi syndicate. That's why I use Surfshark. This information about Tatiana being entrusted to Kurt helps us to understand his mindset for a moment later in the scene. The moment where it's fully revealed that he's actually a closeted gay man. At the very beginning of the show, Kurt witnesses the death of his partner, Owen, and he spends a whole four years of mourning before making the decision to return to spy work. His four-year grieving period is something that his boss chastises him for, as it's seen as abnormal. But she isn't privy to the information that Owen and Kurt were romantic partners as well as partners in spy work. The double meaning of Kurt referring to Owen as his partner in scenes early in the show is a very clever giveaway that you'll notice on repeat watches, on top of all the other ways that he's queer-coded. But how does this tie into the surveillance network of it all? Well, with Kurt being a gay man in the 60s, in the middle of the Lavender Scare no less, go watch Silvana LTD's video for more information about that, this technology would naturally scare him. The possibility of Kurt being outed would be detrimental to every facet of his life. It would effectively put an end to his career, as the American government at the time was looking to oust and fire any homosexuals that were working for them. It would also likely be a huge detriment to his personal life, specifically his relationship with his mother, who was very forward about her desire for Kurt to marry a woman and give her grandchildren. Curtis, we talked 
about this. You're quitting that pesky job and settling down with that nice Russian girl. Mom, a spy's work is never done. This recontextualizes Kurt's reactions when he's first told about the surveillance network. He's playing it cool and writing this information off as nothing as a defense mechanism. What is he supposed to say? Oh, I'm not really on board with this surveillance tech being used because it could very well let the entire country know that I'm something they really don't want me to be. The only thing that makes sense for Kurt is keeping this secret from pretty much everyone. That is, until Tatiana shows up. When Tatiana discovers Kurt's secret, albeit accidentally, he doesn't immediately panic or deny it or do anything drastic to make sure Tatiana doesn't tell anybody. This is in large part because Tatiana is accepting of Kurt, but it is also because Tatiana knows what it's like to have a secret that you need to hide from everybody. Neither can live a truly fulfilling life with these secrets looming over them, but they can at least trust those secrets with each other and find some level of solidarity because of that. And then Owen comes back from the dead. Owen's perspective on this surveillance tech adds another really interesting side to this conflict. As we learned by watching the play, he'd been manipulating the Nazis to get a hold of their surveillance tech, with the goal of being able to deploy it on a global scale, making each government capable of collecting and archiving secrets from other governments. My government never allowed this. The Soviets, the Soviets well, not at first, no. Everybody likes to do the watching, but nobody likes to be watched. So we've covered why Kurt is opposed to this tech becoming commonplace, but why is Owen in favor of it? They're both spies and also closeted gay men who will surely have their entire lives changed by this revolution in spying technology, and yet they stand on opposite sides of this conflict. It makes for a climax that is riddled with layers to both characters and their motivations. This leads us to the last scene I want to focus on with this video. Not the actual final scene in Spies Are Forever, but the last scene that is shared between Kurt Mega and Owen Carver. It starts with Kurt and Owen holding each other at gunpoint. You have a bit of back and forth banter between the two of them, but then the minute Kurt realizes he's not going to stop Owen the traditional spy way, he tries to reason with him. But Owen is dead set on going through with his plans, with the full knowledge that it would effectively dismantle the entire structure that their careers were built on. With surveillance tech being implemented on every level of government around the world, there would be no need for spies like them to go undercover and get the secrets that these machines would be collecting instead. What use will one man be when a box in a room can do his job in seconds? Huh? Kurt is trying to put a stop to this, knowing what it would mean for spies like him, but Owen is embracing it, armed with the knowledge that it will likely still happen regardless. On a surface level, this is all just spy talk, until the last few lines of dialogue. These lines in particular are, are something that I think carry great significance to the scene. A new world awaits us, Kurt. Without agencies, a world without spies, a world without secrets. Some secrets aren't yours to share. Notice the order he lists things in. Notice how the biggest emphasis here isn't on agencies or spies, it's on the secrets that they both hold. And Kurt's immediate rebuttal is to ask about their secrets. A world without secrets wouldn't just mean that they're both out of spy work, it would mean that as government workers, the both of them would be outed as gay. And it's with that knowledge of the characters that I think this scene speaks directly to a conflict that members of the LGBT face on a very regular basis. The question of whether or not you should stay in the closet. Looking at this scene again with this context, on both sides of it, Owen is embracing this change as an inevitability. If spy work is changed forever, he won't have to continue going on the dangerous excursions that nearly got him killed four years ago. And if he is publicly outed as a gay man, he won't have to sneak around or hide who he is. He could just live an honest life. Owen sees this as something that will happen regardless of his own intervention, so he's doing what he can to live with it. But Kurt is afraid of what will happen when this change comes, again, on both sides, and for good reason. If his career is put into jeopardy, he won't be able to continue doing the spy work that gives him meaning, and if Kurt is publicly outed as a gay man, his life would be changed drastically. It would impact his career, his relationship with his mother, it would likely impact the way most of his peers see him, and in the 60s, when homophobia was still significantly more commonplace, it would likely bring many dangers to his everyday life as well. That lack of secrecy comes with its own baggage. The double meaning of Kurt's mindset here even carries over to the closing scenes of the musical. 
Kurt is leaving the agency because the surveillance tech being implemented means he can't continue his career the way he wants to, and he's going to do that work independently instead. But he's also doing it for his own safety as that tech will eventually find out about his own secrets. And Owen's ideology is reflected in Cynthia's little through line that they set up at the beginning of the play. She learns to live with the change by accepting a little bit of poison into her life every day. No choice but to take these changes in stride. That's how I've survived for so long. I don't think this conflict has a correct answer. It's very easy to paint Owen as a villain here because he fills the role of antagonist, but he has solid reasons for wanting to help change the way spying is done and for wanting to come out publicly. But Kurt isn't in the wrong either. His reasons for trying to stop this change and for wanting to keep his secret a secret make just as much sense. That is to say, there isn't any one answer for coming out. It depends on your circumstances and what's comfortable for you personally. Do you come out to everyone or just a select few people that you trust? Do you live somewhere where coming out publicly would be dangerous for you? Are you willing to take that risk so you don't have to lie about who you are, or would you rather keep that part of yourself hidden in circumstances where it could be harmful if that information got out? I have no idea if the Tin Can Bros even did this intentionally. Maybe they just wanted to make a story about gay spies. But the thing that makes this scene an all-time standout for me is the way it takes this question that most members of the LGBT will have to answer at some point, and it captures both sides of it and turns it into a conflict that is truly tragic for both of the characters involved. Kurt and Owen are diametrically opposed here, both trying to get the other to see it the way that they do, but neither is successful because neither of them is necessarily wrong. And because of the violent nature of their jobs, and by extension this conflict, there is no chance for a peaceful resolution. Kurt does move on from the trauma that he was holding onto because of Owen's supposed death, but he isn't ready to share his secrets with the world. He'll live his life in secrecy, and if that's what he wants, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Here's some advice, Kurt. It's called moving on. Do give it a try. You know, killing me won't take the system offline, so... What are you doing? Taking your advice. Also, the informant is transcoded. Okay, bye! A lifetime of pretend adds up until you look in the mirror and you don't recognize the stranger! <laughs> Who is staring? Back at you. <laughs>